my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today the Mother Church commemorates the memorial of the Saint Alphonsus Mary de Ligori, the Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Alphonse, the first of eight children, was born on September 27, 1696 at Naples in Italy. Added to the record or the simplest statements of the subsequent events of his great career. Ordained priest, 1726. Consecrated bishop, 1762. Died, 1787. Canonized, 1839. Doctor of the Church, 1871. This is the story of one of the finest and fullest and most active lives that the annals of the saints unfold. The first evidence of what was to be the ultimate occasion of Alphonsus is to be found in his early childhood. He loved to set up little altars in his home and to imitate the actions of the priests saying, Mass. The feast of his uh, favorite saints. As part of his education, he took lessons in drawing, painting, architecture, and music. And despite the multitude of his uh, duties in later life, never gave up completely his interest in these things. He was highly talented, and his father's pride in him grew day by day. He was a man of wide reading, tenacious memory, direct and straightforward in his language and scrupulously honest and uncompromising in his behavior. Alphonse was torn between two difficult alternatives, his father's authority and his father's worldly desires. In his grief, he turned to one thing that always seemed to comfort him. He walked to the hospital for incurables that he might pass the time assisting his beloved sick. As he went about the wards of the hospital, performing lowly tasks for those who were helpless and suffering, he suddenly seemed to see dazzling light around him and a voice sounded in his ears leave the world and give yourself to me a little frightened and perplexed he started to leave the hospital and a second time the light shone round him and again the voice spoke to him saying leave the world and give yourself to me with the generosity of St. Paul. This time he answered, Lord Jesus, too long have I resisted your grace. Do with me what you will. From the hospital, he walked straight to the church of Our Lady of Ransom. There, the third time, he saw himself surrounded by light and he knelt down at the foot of the altar of Our Lady. Now he realized that what God wanted was to renounce the world completely and become a priest. He prayed for a few moments to the Blessed Mother Mary and then with his eyes fixed on her image, he solemnly renounced his birthright and promised to leave the world and to become a priest. Though his father objected to his decision, Alphonse was firm in his resolve. He could not act contrary to the will of God. His theological studies were made at home under the most noted ecclesiastical scholars that could be obtained. He was ordained a priest on December 21, 1720. 
26. Although he was in great demand as preacher of retreats for various groups, his only ambition was to be a missionary to poor and abandoned souls. Alphonse established a new path by kindness and compassion. He sought to only to awaken the sorrow in the heart of the sinners. Perhaps one of the most joyous admissions of his old age was that which he made to his conference after a long life of labor for souls. I quote, I do not recall ever sending away a sinner without being able to absolve him. Nor do I recall ever having been unkind or harsh in the confessional, unquote. During the early years of his priesthood, we see him perfecting the image of Christ, which he had created in his soul. He became poor, so poor, that he was often ridiculed for his simple and humble garb, because he had worn the raiment of the rich before. He became friend of the poor, going into the streets, the barracks of the soldiers, the shops of the working men, to speak in a simple Christian fashion of the things of God, to men who had seldom heard such things before. Above all, he kept practicing a burning love, a burning desire for Christ, especially directed to the sacred humanity that made him more like him every day. Alphonsus insisted that the members of the Congregation of the Holy Redeemer, which he founded, should live a life of simplicity. Simplicity in their lives so that the poor would be drawn to them and simplicity in their preaching so that the least educated might be won by their words because the chief practice or the purpose of the congregation is the preaching of missions to the poor. The redemptorist, he says, is to be a Carthusian at home and an apostle abroad. On June 20, 1762, he was consecrated as the bishop of the Diocese of Agatha of the Goths by Pope Clement XIII. It was a large diocese with the clergy of 400 diocesan priests, 17 religious houses and about 30,000 faithful. Is it not remarkable that with so deeply spiritual a mode of life, he was able in a short time to change the diocese from one known for its worldliness and laxity into one of religious fervor and zeal. The bishop could read the people's hearts, heal the sick through his prayers and foretell the future. Weakened by severe austerities and unbelievable scope and intensity of his pastoral work, Alphonsus fell victim to a severe attack of gout and rheumatic fever, which left him partially paralyzed to the day of his death. Alphonsus died on August 1st, 1787. One of the inspiring sayings of St. Alphonse de Liguri is that whoever desires the fruit must go to the tree and whoever desires Jesus must go to Mary and whoever finds Mary will most certainly find Jesus. As we celebrate the feast of St. Alphonse de Liguri, May his indomitable love for Jesus and Mary and his unflinching desires to save souls for Christ inspire us. I wish the listeners of Voice of Saints a happy feast and a blessed day.